Hi, in this video I have three of the Sony SD cards. These are all V60. I've used all of these for an extensive period of time and I'm going to give you some of my findings. I'm also going to show you some of the speed tests that I've achieved using these cards and I'll also show you some of the challenges in getting these data rates when you use SD card adapters and which type of adapter is the most suitable. Right, so the first thing you notice, this is tough M, this is M, this is E. This is the cheapest range, the E, and then this one here is more expensive, and then the tough comes with a five-year warranty. So what's actually the difference? Well, if you have the tough one in hand, you'll notice that it doesn't flex easily. If I try and bend it, it's pretty taut. The M, on the other hand, as you can see, it uh, is more elastic and you can see it wants to bend much easier and then obviously the E is the same as the M almost the same packaging now some people have reported that they've struggled with this one getting it in and out of the card slots now I just want to show you a measurement so you can see for yourself if there is any real difference right so the E is pretty much two millimeters thick the M is 1.98 millimeters thick so basically two millimeters and the tough is 2.01 so these cards are all pretty much the same so what's the problem the problem is is actually the shape of the card you can see here the card is flat there's no raised sections and then suddenly it raises to have this platform over here right so looking at the side view you can see that this is thin and there you can see that platform and the problem people are having is as follows if you look at the other cards you will see that it's almost guided to that thicker part. There are channels that are already at the same thickness as the thicker part, which is also true for the E. If you have a look at the E range, it's also got those guides. But when you have a look at the tough series, you'll see there's no guides. Yes, I have had issues getting this into a card slot because of that. Now, this type of card slot does not have any issue at all, and neither does this one. And here you can see it gets in and out perfectly. So where do I have a problem? I have a problem on my camera. When I put this into my camera slot, occasionally it gets stuck over there and I just got to wiggle it a little bit. So yes, you might find this a little bit more tricky getting this into very snug card slots like digital cameras and things like that. But bottom line, these cards are the same size. Now what you'll also notice on the Tough series, there's no lock here. You see on the other ones, there's the lock on the side there, but on the tough series, there's, so there's no moving parts. So is there any difference in the mass? Well, the M series, this is 128 gig, weighs 1,76, and the E series weighs 2,04 grams, and the tough series weighs 2,77 grams. We can only compare the E and the tough because these are the same capacity, and you can see that the E series is quite a bit lighter. You can feel that the Tough Series is heavier. So the Tough Series is 35% heavier than the other cards. Right, so before I show you the performance test on the computer, I'm just going to give you my opinion on these cards, having used them extensively. This was my first one I've had for more than a year. I've used it more than 500 times. I record 4K, 60 frames per second with a high bit rate. These cards do get warm and I've never lost one file. This one I've used extensively and for the most part, it doesn't make a difference to me. I can put either of these cards in my camera and I get the same performance. The tough version, when I put these into my camera, I notice no difference between any one of these three cards. When it comes to copying the files, they are also pretty close. I don't actually notice a difference in copying the files. Often the files I'm copying are 15 gigs each because of the 4k footage and I don't notice a big difference although I will do the speed test for you shortly. So do these cards get hot? What I've noticed is yes the cards do get warm but never so hot that I can't touch them. Is there any difference between the heat of the three cards? Well I haven't noticed any difference and as I said I've never had a problem with a card overheating or failing because of overheating. Right so I've created a little table here. I've got the three cards E256 gig, the M128 gig and the M Tough 256. This is the rated specification so the E should be able to get to 270 megabytes per second when I'm doing the retest and the write test should be able to get 120 megabytes per second. 
Right, the M series, you can see it has the same specification. So I'm going to do the test. I've got a file which I'm going to be using for this test. The file is a 7 gig file. It is a .mov file, a very common format used by videographers. And just about my computer, this would be one of your top end computers. This is a Dell 7740 precision laptop, one of the highest spec laptops in the world. For these tests, I'm using the onboard SD card reader. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this file to the card and check the measurement. All right, so we can see that it's almost instantaneous, 145 megabytes per second. All right, so the maximum was 147. It's hovering between 144 and 145. I'm gonna put 145. All right, so there you can see very smooth plateau there, no hiccups at all. Now, when it comes to the read speed, there's a little problem, and that is some of the data might get cached into the computer's memory. I've also added some files here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy and paste onto my desktop, and we should see the maximum data rate. Right, so there we see 252, 251, 250, but I just wanna show you something. If I pause it and stop it, and now copy that same file, back into this folder, now you're gonna see some really fast data rates because it's still in the cache. Look, 1.2 gigabytes per second. Now it's going back to the transfer rate of 251, 250 or whatever. And the reason why this is higher is it was already stored in the memory. So when you're doing these tests, just be careful you don't get caught out by that because you might think the card is faster than it is. Right, so for the most part, you can see that it is still at about 250 odd, um, 255, there we go, 256, 256, 257 even. So for the most part, I think it was about 255. Now I'm gonna try the M series. All right, so I've inserted the M series version in now. And I'm gonna paste that file onto the desktop. And so far, it's a little bit quicker. We can see 264, 265. Right, so I'm going to put this as 264. And the write speed. I'm going to take it at 158. Right, now the last card is the M Tough. Okay, so it had a maximum of about 260 odd. Um, I'm gonna take the average at about 259. And now I'm gonna do the write test. Right, it was around the 155, 154 mark, but for the most part it was at about 154. Right, so here are the results. Now, these are the reported maximum rated read and write speeds from Sony, while the ones that I took were more towards the average. Now, you may have noticed that the read and write speeds were quite constant. So even though the maximum may have been a little bit higher, it wasn't much higher than what I have here. So right, looking at the E-Series, it was rated at 270 and I was getting 255. The read is rated at 120 and I was getting 145. So that's great. And then the M series rated higher, 277 is the maximum read. And I was getting about 264 and the write speed is supposed to be 150 as a maximum, but I was getting 158. And then the M tough series again, 259 and 154. So you can see that there isn't a lot of difference between these three cards. In fact, if you look at the cheaper series, the E256, look at the write speed, it was 145. And this is one of the reasons why I said in the beginning of the video that I haven't noticed much difference between these cards because if you're copying 40 gigs across to your computer, it only amounts to a couple of seconds different. Now, all of these tests were conducted using the internal SD card reader. But what about standalone SD card readers? Which should you get and which will not give you those speeds? Right, so when it comes to the card readers, what you're looking for is this specification over here. And it actually states it on the Sony cards recommendation. It says the UHSII, 
UHS-2 reader is needed in order to realize these transfer speeds. So I have this Transcend card reader. Now there's nothing wrong with this uh, card reader and there's an updated version of USB 3.1, but it specifically states here that it is compatible with UHS-2 cards, but only operates at UHS-1 speeds. So if I quickly do a copy, you will see what I'm talking about. Right, so this is the card that is connected to this USB card reader, and I'm going to copy a file into this folder. Now, straight away, you can see that I'm not getting anywhere near those maximum transfer rates. And in terms of write speeds, if I copy to the card, same story, I'm capped at about 80 megabytes per second. Right, then I've also got this particular card reader. You can see that it actually specified UHS-2. So it's supposed to be able to give you speeds up to 280 megabytes per second. So I'll just demonstrate that for you. All right, so this is the card. I've got some fresh files here that have not been copied before on my computer and I copy it into that folder. And there you can see the card reader is actually giving me a higher transfer rate than the USB 3.0 card reader. And when it comes to write speeds, starting off slow, but now it's built up. There we go. Okay, so 154, 155, that's pretty much what I was getting with the internal card reader of this laptop. Now, the very last thing I'm going to touch on is what happens if you want to play your video from the card? Does it respond? Can you watch a 4K video that was recorded at 50 frames per second or a video that's got a bit rate of 200 megabits per second? Can you watch that directly from the card? Does it jitter? And what you'll see here is that for the most part, it's usable. Right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to play from the card. So this was recorded at 4K, uh, this was 50 frames per second, 100 megabits per second. And what you can see here is the, the video is playing fine. If I skip ahead, you can see that it, there's no problem. So in terms of usability with the cards, if you want to play from the card or quickly check your footage, there isn't a problem with using these cards. The transfer rate is actually decent. So you can preview your footage directly from the card without having to copy it to your computer. If you're specifically looking for a USB 3 connection for your card reader, you can get UH2 card readers. Here is the Sony version, giving you a maximum read speed of 300 megabytes per second. Just having a look at the speed class, these cards are all V60 which means they can all do at least 4K footage. You can do 8K footage, but then the data rate, the write speed is where the limitation is. If you have a look at this drawing over here, so 4K is 3840 by 2160, but true 4K is actually 496. But anyway, here you can see V60 is in this category. And if you want to see the maximum data rate, you can see it says the frame rate 60 frames per second or 120 frames per second. But there it says they're 60 megabytes per second but if you go back to this table you can see that for 4k 60 megabytes per second is 480 megabits per second so for most people that is more than sufficient because most people even if you're recording at 50 frames per second or 60 frames per second 200 megabits per second is a common transfer rate on a camera very few cameras are recording over 400 megabits per per second. So for the V60, you're safe. So for 4K recording at a high bit rate, you'll be safe with using the V60 card. Right, so that brings me to the end of the video. Obviously, if you wanted to do this test in more detail, you would repeat the test, repeat the test, different file formats, different quantity of files on the cards, and you could do extensive testing. I just use this for videography and the files are pretty much the same format and they're usually very large files and I get these consistent data rates. For the most part, I generally get these all the time. So I'm happy with these results. They're pretty close to what I usually see. All right, so thanks for watching and cheers.